<laughs> oh, it's amazing. Well, you know, I, I like super fast writing. You know, I, I, I like super fast writing. I like throwing words on the wall and the uh, Jackson Pollock style. Uh, uh, you know, you can't rewind the universe. So, so uh, you got to throw those words on the page and it's over. It's over. Anything else you do is another poem. <laughs> yeah, anything else you do is another poem. And, uh, and if you do it again, it's another poem. So if you revise, you revise a poem long enough, you have a whole book. So, so, so anyone in the workshop, that's secret number one. If, you, if you're going to write a book, just revise that first poem, you know, uh, like 60 times. And you got a, you know, you got your manuscript. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I have like 10 points, 10, 10 different uh, optics here. I don't know what they are, 10 different batteries. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so battery number one, um, you know, get rid of the beginning. Get rid of the end and see what you got. <laughs> right? Because we're warming up when we start writing. Even though, uh, you know, we're warming up when we start writing. This is like uh, battery number one. And in the end, you know, we're trying to put it all together. And a poem doesn't like those two things. <laughs> right? A poem likes heat and explosive uh, core. So that must be somewhere in the middle. So that, that's battery number one. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, right, you know uh, that battery number two. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we start rationalizing, right? We start looking at the poem, you know. Uh, is this really saying what I wanted to say? And, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure, you know, this poem is about my uh, existential position in between uh, darkness and jade. <laughs> so once, once you start to do that, you know, your poem is taken off in another direction. It's somewhere else. It's somewhere else. Otherwise, if it was ra a rational construct, uh, you know, uh, well, then you'd be writing a paper in an uh, anthro class. You know, a, a poem is ungraspable. So, uh, that's battery number two. Uh, battery number three is a, is a, is a really cool struggle uh, that, that we all go through. You know, is it text? Is it art? Is it text? Is it art? Of course it's both, but it's easy to slide towards one or the other. You know, if we, if we slide towards text, then we're going to get caught up in the briars and brambles of language. And then we slide towards art, it's going to be all about, you know, play, and it's going to be about white space on the page. It's going to be about uh, the anti-resonances of, of sound and image and uh, structure of line and, and uh, echoing of uh, stuff on that verbal, nonverbal, uh, splish splash <laughs> of uh, Jackie Pollock, you know. So, so I like the art. I like the art, and uh, so I like to take that text where it doesn't go. It's like that. Mat it's like that Matisse exhibit. And if you open up one of those uh, the Matisse postcards or notebooks, he has language attached to that uh, paper cutout, but he doesn't have language as language. He says he puts language there so it can play against the art. So for him, letters and, and words are not really words and letters. Uh, they're just kind of like uh, uh, swirly uh, brush strokes. So art or language. Art or text. Or text or art. Or both. Are they both? That's one of our struggles. So, explore both. And kind of right now, there's a lot of f emphasis on text. It's kind of been this uh, push towards text. So, you know, be the poets and push against text and push towards art. So that everybody in the workshops is doing text, where well, you go, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You know? 
<laughs> so, uh, that's number five. <laughs> number five? You want to go to number five? Number five. Uh, you want to go to number five? Uh, let's see. Uh, let the poem write itself. That's number five. Okay. Yeah, let, let the poem write itself. <laughs> so you just sit back and the poem is just writing itself. Uh, you know, some, you know, so, so that's why it's cool just to sit down or stand up or walk and write and without a care. Because a poem will write itself. Y your hand will just be moving. You go, oh, look, I've got a Ouija hand. <laughs> and, and, and it's just moving. You're just, you're just letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. Remember, we're not writing a paper. That, that one you don't let you go, well, uh, therefore, during the Pleistocene, there were Devonian influences. <laughs> we're not writing a paper. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So that was number, what was that, number five. Yeah, let, that, let the poem write, let the poem write itself. Yeah. How you doing? Well, you know, I'm working on my 49th revision. But you know, Victor Martinez, I would always visit Victor Martinez in San Francisco, apartment number 10, 949 Cap Street, passed away, lung cancer, 2011. A great writer and thinker. Hey, Vic, you know, uh, you know, I got some poems. You know, I've been publish publishing some poems in the Hate Asbury Journal. And what about you? I'm uh, working on my 3,000th revision, why? <laughs> I got it down to just three lines. <laughs> and he got the National Book Award. <laughs> and I had typos in the Haight-Ashbury Journal. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, that, that's, that's, that was Victor. You know, he chiseled, he chiseled. Uh, so number five, let the poem write itself. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, number six is, uh, is, is moved on. <laughs> uh, do not suffocate your poem with concepts. Something I love to do. Something I'm doing right now. I'm writing on surveillance and unsurveillance. And you know, I'm suffocating that poem. And then it just barks back at me and wants to go elsewhere. And I go back at it and it barks back at me and we fight. And I don't want to write it anymore. It's too conceptual. I shouldn't write it. I should do something else, positive, something for the world, something that people will understand. <laughs> it's too bad. I mean, the poem's got me. I can't get out until it's over. I still say, though, do not suffocate the poem with concepts, even though I'm doing that right now. Um, because that seems to be something we're all into these days. So again, you know, uh, MFAers and peoples, go against that current and uh, just let it go, you know? Breathe into it. You know, wrap it around your face and go <gasps> <laughs> Number seven. Um, yeah, move on and let the poem, let the ne oh yeah, move on, leave that poem alone and, let, and write the next poem and let the next poem help you with that first poem. Because nice. we get stuck to that first poem, we keep on revising it and you know, we're bleeding in there, you know, we're bleeding in there. You know, uh, your rant comes in and what are you doing Barnaby? I'm bleeding in here. I need some, I, I'm bleeding. <laughs> so go to the next poem, okay? And the next poem will go, hey, hey, cool out, Barnaby. Here's, here's some ideas. It'll happen in the next poem. And with the third poem, it'll help your first poem, your second poem. You can revise with the first poem with your second poem. Yeah, because your second poem may eat up your first poem. That's okay. It's poetry cannibalism. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> And number eight, somehow, your poem doesn't have to be a book. And we're all getting kind of serious out there. You know, <laughs> I'm doing this, you know, it's a book on surveillance and anti-surveillance. And uh, it doesn't have to be a book. I think we left that idea long ago. I think we're doing this, we've been doing this for a long time. But it was a, it was a nice, cool, you know, Devonian period when we were amphibians. 
Uh, it was just a poem, one poem here, then another poem there, another poem there, one on daffodils, <laughs> one on massacres, <laughs> one on shoes, you know, one on quarks, uh, and they didn't go together as a book. But we left that, you know, we left that a long time ago. And now we're writing books, and uh, we're blurring the genres. <laughs> we're writing blur genre. <laughs> Where it's either a book, or, or a poem, or a dance. <laughs> or an allegory of, uh, of an arpeggio. <laughs> but just, you know, it's okay. You know, write a poem here and a poem there. It doesn't have to be a book. And that kind of, you know, frees you up a little bit, MFAers and peoples. And um, number nine, small is most interesting. Long is nearly impossible. I don't know how Ed Hirsch did it. <laughs> right, a long poem, it's heavy duty. It's heavy. You're going to have to talk to Ed because that's a heavy thing to do. I remember Jerry Stern said, you're going to have to sustain that, Juan Felipe. You're going to have to sustain. Yeah, I like the 24 stanzas, but you're going to have to make. Are you sustaining it? Can you actually. Is it alive? Is it a 24 stanza alive? I like the first one. You know, the first stanza is beautiful, but can you make it? Can you get over there? And you know, one way I get over there is um, playing a lot with cesura, playing a lot with structure within the line. Uh, that helps me get. Uh, further down the down the down the page, you know, working with the art of of the line and the art of the structure, of the stanza, or of the whatever whatever's going on in the page. If I just plain talk myself all the way to the sixth page, I'm going to die on page two. So how would you, how do we sustain uh, a long poem? That's going to be a question. If that's what if, that, if that's what you're doing, and small is most interesting, because small is going to really put you to task. It's going to put you to task. You don't have to use all the power in the world, and all your you know uh, all your atomic and uh, energy to make that for those four lines crackle. You have to make them crackle, and you're going to have to. Lay it down fast, you're going to have to lay it down slow, you're going to have to use art, you're going to have to use space, you're going to have to use cesura, you're going to have to use image, you're going to, it's, you're going to be beautiful. And you're going to pierce the page and you're going to pierce infinity. As the ancient Chinese poets. Number nine, was that number nine? All right. And number ten, then there's a bonus. <laughs> a poem doesn't have to be a poem. How do you like that? <laughs> it can be simply something that goes somewhere, that goes with something else. <laughs> a poem doesn't have to be a poem, it can be simply something that goes with something else. It's all yours, okay? I'll leave that with you. <laughs> <laughs>